I'm talking about our OFW for overseas workers. What's the difference between heroes and martyrs? Well, martyrs are automatically heroes, but most heroes are still alive. Well, martyrs, our understanding is they're dead. Again, they're recognized. So although our heroes are alive and are in other countries, and because of them we have a new middle class, and because of the religious our economy is growing and, and there's spending and there's consumer, um, the consumers have a spending power and our um, uh, retail trade or dealing uh, manufacturing side is still there no? and, and growing. But what's happening to the 14 million, that's 14% 14 of our population abroad? What is happening to their families? I've been attending the OFW communities, for example, in Hong Kong. I attended Father's Day. One after the other, mostly women, come to stand up before the community and say, you know what, despite our family turning our backs on us, we should love them all the same. What do you mean turning your backs on them? They're there and they're sacrificing, they're having such a hard life to send mom back home. But why do they feel that their backs are being turned? Because their husbands have uh, other relationships. Because their children, some of their children do not talk to them because they thought that they abandoned them rather than thinking that they're sacrificing for them. Because their parents are sometimes jealous of the children or grandchildren because the money should go to them instead of them. So you know, there's so much social problems by being brought out by this model. Some people are saying it's working. No, it's not working. The money might be there, but the social problems outweigh the amount of money that is coming in. And I think the people here who are from countries where we also have a lot of OFWs understand where we're coming from. Old models are failing, and people are demanding empowerment. People are demanding change. But the technology is also there for change. For those of you who have been here the last few days, you might have uh, heard about the virus calamities hitting the Philippines. Um, a few weeks ago, or a few days ago, Nueva uh, Ecija, a whole province, was flooded by a, uh, a storm. Uh, it was flooded, and then two towns, two big towns in Bulacan. And in Nueva Ecija, the, this is a big rice plantation. This is a, a place that we get a lot of our grain from. And I think in the next few months, the rest of the country is going to feel the damage because the prices of rice will be going up because of the demand and, and the supply and demand problem. Um, in Sambuanga, because again of uh, both religious and social problems, uh, a big part of the city was burned down and now thousands are homeless, hundreds of thousands uh, are having problems and investors have pulled out because they said, you know, it's just too much for us to invest here. We will go somewhere else. And then while we're still dealing with that problem, an earthquake hits Paul and Cebu. And the problem is the leaders of the country are having a hard time dealing with this because they're embroiled in corruption issues. It's so hard to follow when there's a doubt on the leaders. And I'm not only talking about specific leaders because there's so much frustration from our people, from all administrations over the last 20, 30, 40 years. And I draw a parallelism with the economic systems. It's easy to say that the economy is growing, the world is recovering, there are models you can point to, but there's so much frustration because every generation says, I'm doing this for my children. But every next generation says the same thing. For my children, for my children. It's just a way to tell us it's working, but we just have to wake up and tell ourselves it's not working. And we have to have a new model. Going back to technology. In other countries, they're using it. Here, we're very limited. We're using cell phones to transfer cash. So our two, uh, two of the biggest or almost only networks in the Philippines, Globe and Smart, have their own programs. So together with the DSWD, the Department of Social Work and Development, 
They have already raised money in the past, together with the Red Cross. They have raised money, but the technology is not immediately available. So I'm asking the Central Bank and I'm asking the, the National Telecommunication Commission, why don't you make that uh, technology available? Why don't you make it as simple as buying a SIM card and buying the governor of all? And I go to the say, family, fellow Filipinos, we're in need. Please help us. If 100 million Filipinos give one peso in a sense of community, in a sense of solidarity, that's 100 million pesos. In the U.S., most Americans have credit cards. They have PayPal, they have access. So it's so easy to transfer money. So if you're raising money, it's just a question of how much they want to give and if they want to give. In the Philippines, so many people want to give. But you have to absent yourself in work, or you have to put it in the mail and don't know if you'll get stolen. And you know, so sometimes sending five pesos is even more expensive. Because if you need it, you spend more than five pesos. But you have the technology, you know? If, if the technology is made available to us, I tell you right here, you know what? Cebu needs this. And imagine that 14 million Filipinos abroad. Although they're taking care of their families, they usually are the donors when there are problems. If they give one dollar each, that's 14 million dollars. So the technology is there. And that's one thing that I want to share with you today. We might be in five continents, but with the technology, I continue learning, I continue the... In our city, for example, they put a live stream for graduation. Because you realize that the simple thing as a parent seeing their high school or elementary child graduate, for them to feel that they are there, you know, it was a small thing for the city, but we didn't realize that for the relatives of those who are graduating, it was a big, big thing. So you might think that what you are doing in your country is a small thing. You might think that that success is a small thing. That recognition that you will give a village chief, or that dividends that they are going to give around. You might think it's a small thing, but it inspires people. Imagine if that's a live streaming, if that's on the net, and the rest of the world sees what is happening. Not only the communities, who are already in the social solidarity economy, but more so those who are not yet believers. So let me just put that in as one of my contributions today. That there should really be a group that is just simply looking at technology and how this technology can be used in the objectives of this new model. As I said, we're going through a problem right now in our country, the pork bottle scam. We're going through, uh, we're going through um, part of our country where people don't believe in politicians anymore and we need solutions. I'm talking about roadblocks. In this scam, fake or bogus NGOs were used to funnel money instead of going to communities and instead of going to agricultural communities and instead of going to development, it went to the pocket of some politicians. What is the problem and why I'm saying it's another roadblock? Because now, when you say the word NGO or PO, People's Organization or Non-Government Organization in the Philippines, it's like they're saying a bad word. It's like all NGOs are there to cycle of money to steal, to cheat people. When all NGOs that are real are really for the people, this is the alternative. These are the models that are saying that these corporations are good, but they also contribute to evil in our world. That their system is not perfect, but we can have another system that helps everyone, where in the good outweighs the bad, if ever. But instead of helping us, it is now a hindrance to us. But in the world there is a model, you're corrupt, you get put in jail. You steal, you get put in jail. All around the world, we say, Bawa, Magnahaw, it is illegal to steal. 
In the Philippines, bawal magnakaw ng konti. In the Philippines, it is prohibited from stealing if you steal a little bit. Because if you steal a lot, you get promoted and you get to the higher exodus of government. So the difference is not corruption, because there is corruption in the whole world. The difference is that some countries have found a way to deal with corruption and put people in jail. And we are still struggling with that. That's why the last few days I've been asking the Office of the Ombudsman to speed up the cases. Although I know how hard it is, she has to file the cases and have to have the preliminary investigation so that the process can move forward. <laughs> and let me draw a parallelism with the world economy. Every time there is a US-led or a Wall Street-led failure, the rest of the world suffers. And why we all suffer, no one goes to jail. <laughs> These economic crimes that is happening around the world with the biggest countries, the poor suffers the most. The middle class, who lose, the, the people who lose their homes, people who lose their businesses, People who have a lifetime saving, lifetime saving, and are now senior citizens are saying, at least I have my pension, at least I have my saving. Suddenly, it's all gone. Yet, there are few, if any, who is actually punished by all of this. And why we're not here today to move for those punishments? Because they will give us a simple answer. What's your alternative? So we're not here today to push those who are guilty of economic crimes and those who have, I don't know, plundered or used their knowledge, used um, their power to steal from the world. But we're here to tell them, hey, now we have an alternative. Now we can talk. Now we can repair what is broken. The new world is right to hear this. And we should use the technology and we should use everything that is dear to us in our community. Let me end with one example. Once upon a time, Filipinos were proud shoemakers. I'm wearing shoes today that are made in Maritina, one of the shoe capitals of the Philippines. And it is one fifth or one tenth the price of Italian branded shoes. And I have no doubt that Italian branded shoes are some of the best in the world. But every time, even at the fashion, uh, people in uh, our country see the shoes, they say that, is, is that Italian? Is that sweet? Is that important? Whatever. No. 20 years ago, 100,000 Filipinos worked in this city making these shoes. 10 years ago, 40,000. Now only 60,000. Because of the type of economy we have, but with the social solidarity economy, communities create values, love what we make, love the value that we produce and share the profit, we can change all of this. Thank you very much for this opportunity.